Joining us now, she's the senior uh, pitcher, leader, one of the leaders on the Kansas Jayhawks, uh, of course, out of Topeka, Kansas, to speak of Casey Hamilton. Joining us here at In the Circle, uh, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. How does it feel being your senior year here? Has it hit you? I don't know if it's hit me quite yet. I think it'll probably hit me the first day we get to put that uniform on, but um, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a really special year, so... You're not the only senior. You got a lot of veterans on this team. You've kind of, I mean, is it safe to say you've kind of grown up with these young, you know, your teammates here, right? It's almost like a family together. Is that an accurate description? Yeah, totally. We've talked about it um, kind of going into this season that this program is really special because this senior class, like we've started freshman to senior year and we've picked up um, a couple on the way, but it, not many programs can say that they've Hi, they have a senior class that has started from freshman year to senior year, and we haven't lost anyone. No one's no one's leaving Kansas, and I think a lot can be said for that. How would you describe this senior class for those that uh, that, that don't know? Um, I would say the senior class is just a lot of fun. We like to tease the rest of the team and say that they're going to be so bored next year without us. Um, <laughs> I think we're just a really fun group. And like I said, since we've kind of got to grow up together, um, every day is just a hoot with them. It's the best class. Of course, you play for Coach McFalls. What's it like to play for Coach McFalls, who is an Olympian? Uh, and you say, I don't know how much that gets brought up to Coach, but uh, what what's it like playing for? Um, playing for McFalls has been such a great experience. I think everyone on the team just has the utmost respect for her, and um, it's sometimes you forget, but like we'll be going through practice, and she'll bring something up about her experiences as an Olympian, and you're like, wow, yeah, like that's really cool. Like she's been in that position and like we're in our position here getting to learn from that like what a cool experience so you're uh, one of the leaders on this pitching staff a deep pitching staff with a lot of experience just talk about this pitching staff that you're with here because you know early on in your career you had to carry a lot of the load but as time went on now you've got more depth on the pitching side I know coach McFalls told me that she really likes the depth of this staff so you don't have to carry the load so just you know, you got players like Ludwig and company. So tell us a little bit about this pitching staff. Yeah, I'm, that's another reason why I'm so excited for this year is because of how deep we are in the bullpen. Um, and that's something that honestly, we haven't really had in the past. So like going back to sophomore year, there was four of us total, like we had four options to put in the circle. And so that was a lot of load for each and every one of us. And we managed and we did, we did everything that we could, but this year it's just like, such a nice cushion that we can already feel under us just knowing that like we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can every time we step in the circle but if we need to throw a different look now we have that option and that it's just really refreshing how would you describe your career and for the seniors for that matter there's been some highs and lows as there is right in life uh how would you describe this journey to this point oh i this these four years have just been like absolute best experience I could have asked for. Um, I was blessed enough that going into my freshman year, I got some really quality innings and I just kind of like had to jump head first and um, being able to have that experience freshman year, I think has just set me up so nicely going into my senior year. And like um, last year we didn't have a senior pitcher, but I was able to like take that role as the leader of the pitching staff, I feel like. And um it's, it's just been really nice being able to have the support of my team and like feel like I'm in that leadership position even from day one as a freshman. So it's just been so awesome. For someone this year that maybe hasn't seen you pitch or play and they're going to see you for the first time, how would you describe the kind of player you are? Um, from other people, what I've heard and honestly what I'd say about myself is I think my presence has a lot to do with uh, the success that I have on the field. Um, I like to carry myself with swag. I like to be confident, even if I'm not feeling it, fake it till you make it. That's kind of what I live by. So um, just having a presence in the circle is just the biggest thing. And that's kind of what I try to tell myself and carry myself with every game is have that swag and celebrate everything. Everything should be celebrated. That's good. Have some fun, right? This is supposed to be fun after all, right? Totally. totally. Makes sense. You as a pitching staff, you have a new pitching coach. Uh, how has that adjustment been? What is that like uh, to have a new pitching coach there and then kind of learning each other? It has been honestly fantastic. I think her transition has been 
really seamless. She fits right into our culture and um, what we value. So it's been a super easy transition and I, it's only been two weeks maybe, but um, we're really excited. We're really excited for what she's going to bring and everything that she's brought already has just been like out of what we even expected. Like it's been fantastic. So I think for our, for our deep pitching staff this year with a really phenomenal coach, like I, our expectations are very high this year for our pitching staff. You've been described as one of the leaders. Describe your leadership skills. Are you more of a vocal leader? Do you like to lead by example? How would you describe your leadership? Um, I think especially come game time, I think I lead a lot with my energy. So just like, like I was talking about with my presence, with um, just like the vibe of the team, I think I can really lead with how competitive I am and um, just taking everything not nothing is taken for granted like every single out every single strike like it's a big deal and when I can feel that energy from my team and they can feel that from me like I think that's a great way that I've found in myself that I can lead the team is just with energy and vibes and competitiveness and like a fire in my belly so obviously as everybody you know a pitcher's for success also can't be without a great catcher uh, you got a good one for yourself. Talk about your catcher there. And uh, well, she had a pretty good year and has had a pretty good career herself. Yeah. Um, throwing to Lyric is one of my favorite things. We, um, starting from freshman year to now, like we're just always on the same wavelength, always on the same page. When I, when we're in a, when we're in a good game and a good at bat and I turn around and I think about a pitch I want to throw and I turn around and she's on the same page calling that pitch, like there's not a better feeling. And She's with me all the time when I'm celebrating little things. She's going to be there first and she's going to get up in my face and she's going to fire me up and I'm going to do the same for her. So we've just been a really good battery with each other. I think we work really, really well. And um, she she's just the energy of this team, too. So we work really well together. And all region catcher, there yeah. too. I mean, Larry yeah. had a great year. It was recognized. You had to be excited. Were you excited when she got those acc accolades? Oh, yeah, because she deserves it. She put so much time in and um she's so dedicated to this team and all she wants to do is win and it's really admirable so she deserves every bit of it let's talk about your upbringing what got you into playing softball growing up well what what got you interested did you have a favorite player that inspire what got you into softball yeah honestly I was kind of all over the place growing up playing sports my older sister played softball and as the youngest I was dragged around to all the ball fields and um all I wanted to do was be like her so ended up working out pretty well for me but I sports was everything growing up in our family. Um, so I, in high school, I was a three sport athlete. I played golf, basketball and softball. My dad was a collegiate golf coach, played basketball in college. My brother played football in college. Like we're just, it's just competitive all the time. So um, being in the circle and pitching is where I really found my niche. I think just like having the chance to have the ball in my hand, every single play was something different than any other sport I could find. And I just loved it. So Golfer. Golfer right. yeah. <laughs> what kind of golfer were you? Um, I, I played all four years of high school. I'm a lefty golfer. Um, I did okay. I kind of, I called it my fun sport because I took basketball and softball pretty seriously. So the fall <laughs> golf time was just kind of for fun. <laughs> I've never heard that used golf and fun in the same sentence. <laughs> Usually golf comes with the word frustration more <laughs> so than fun there. Do you still play? I do. I try to play as much as I can. And honestly, the more I play, the more I can find a lot of parallels with golf and pitching as much as as crazy as that sounds. But um, it's it's such a mental game. And so is pitching like every single every single stroke you're taking takes so much concentration and thought into it. And so does pitching. So a lot of the movement is the same. Um, the torque, like it, there's just a lot of parallels with it that I think is really interesting. So. Yeah. Oh, that that's interesting. I tend to see what you're see, you mean though, because in golf, you know, if your mechanics are not one bad swing and you hit the bunker, you hit the water, it, it's done. It's kind of like pitching. One mistake could be a home run, could be the game, right? So there's similarity from that standpoint. You almost have to be close to perfect on every swing or in every pitch. Yep. And in high school golf and college too, I mean, there's no carts. You're walking all 18 holes, so you yeah. hit a bad shot. You're taking a few minutes to walk to your ball. Like you gotta find yourself in the right mental state to not beat yourself up and get yourself in the right headspace to go get a good shot on the next one. And that's the same thing, like get a home run hit off you. You have a couple of minutes to like regroup 
and get your head in the right space to go after that next batter and not just tell yourself, talk down on yourself and just having to pick yourself up. The mental space is very similar. Wow. That's pretty good. Have you gone to any like PGA tour events or a major? I haven't. I would love to. I'm, I, I actually really enjoy watching golf. So <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. Do you have a favorite player? Mm, just because of my dad. Uh, I really like Roy McRoy. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I recommend yeah going. I've gone to many tournaments in the Orlando area. They always had the Bay Hill tournament yeah. when Tiger Woods has won there. I've seen like all the great there. That's a, it's a fun event. There is some walking involved, but you know, it, it's yeah. it's deal. That's pretty good. Lefty golfer and obviously basketball. You play basketball. What kind of basketball player were you? I was a point guard, and I drove to the basket, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. I wasn't much of a shooter, but I put it in my left hand, and I'm I'm doing something. I still, I like to hoop too. I'll go to the rec center every once in a while. And try well, to put some stuff up. <laughs> well, you also have a, a very famous uh, basketball arena in there, uh, Fog Allen. Yes. You ever shoot a basket there? I don't think I've ever shot on Allen. Whoa! Field I know. <laughs> you got to do that before you go. Like that has That's to like, good. come on. That's a really good point. Actually, good. I and like growing up in Topeka, I mean, KU basketball is worship. So like I've watched it since I could remember. And so like, being an athlete at KU now, getting to go to games whenever I want, like it's just the coolest thing. So full circle, I love it. Describe that for fans that have never been to Fog Allen. What is that experience like? And do you remember the first time you went? Oh, I the first time I went to Fog Allen was I was probably five or six. Um, but it's just unlike anything else. The energy in there, the atmosphere, and it just it keeps you coming back. It's truly just the craziest place. Every game's a, every game sold out. Every game matters. Like it's just the craziest place, and anyone will tell you that. And it's been so fun growing up with the biggest KU family, biggest KU basketball fans, and then being able to like somewhat be a part of it. It's so cool. Was that a part of the reason you? How did you end up going coming to Kansas? Was it because of that? What give, give us the what led you to uh, come to KU? Yeah, um, throughout my recruiting process, KU was always at the top of my list. Um, I never pictured myself going super far. And then actually um, softball recruiting has kind of made a turn. It used to be a lot different recruiting girls a lot earlier than it is now. But um, I was actually my sophomore year of high school. I was 15 years old, committed to Valparaiso University. It's about it's a little outside of Chicago. Um, so that was going to be a far move when I was 15. I thought that sounded fun. Um, but at KU, Coach McFalls moved in my junior year and uh, got to see me just at some high school games and decided that she would um call me up see what my thoughts were and I jumped on it as quick as I could it was it was a really I'm so blessed that that um opportunity fell in my hands really because it's the best decision I ever made what was it like when you stepped on campus you've been on campus obviously as you just mentioned you grew up a, K a Kansas basketball fan so obviously you've been on the campus before but what is it like when you're on campus as a student athlete um it's so cool it's when when you're being recruited to like everyone it's all the all the flashy stuff kind of gets in the way like going to a d1 power five get all the cool gear get to do all the cool things and that's that's also that's all part of it and that's so fun but like genuinely being able to represent the university of kansas across my chest and like being a face of a program at the university of kansas is like such a dream and like i know so many girls would kill for it and i'm so thankful, so blessed. And like, I'm really, I've really been able to soak that in my senior year, like knowing that this is such a special opportunity and I'm so blessed that I've been able to experience it. Is that something you relay that to some of your younger teammates, that passion? Cause I can sense that in your voice, you grew up, you've got Jayhawk blood, literally, like you're a Kansas lifer. Do you, do you feed that off to the youngsters there is kind of inspiring them? Like, hey, this is, this is means a lot to a lot of people mean, you know, the passion of that, that is Kansas. Absolutely. Um, some days just like the grind of everything can be a lot and it's easy to gripe and moan about just the daily ordinary practice lift grind of it all. But sometimes, and like I said, this year, I've really been able to take a step back and just like realize how amazing it is. And that's hard to do when you're a freshman, like it's all so new, it's all hard, but, um, when you can like really have an appreciation for it, it makes it so much better and honestly easier because, when you're grateful, everything's easier. So, 
how are you different person today than you were when you first uh, walked on campus? In so many ways. Um, the growth throughout the four years is amazing. And I think, I think coach McFalls can attest to that, but like, I, it's hard. Like it's so hard um, being in such a new environment, being for the first time being a small fish in a big pond. Like it's, it's a lot to adjust to like time commitment wise, schedule wise, academic rigor wise. Like there's just so much to adjust to and it's hard. And I, I was probably a, fell a little bit behind freshman year with adjusting to all that, but I can look back now and see how I've grown and help younger girls who might be in my same position. And that means a lot to me to be able to kind of connect with them on that level, connect with freshmen and help them out. Cause sometimes I wish I had more of that. So it means a lot. What's the biggest advice you give them? Mm. The biggest advice I would give freshmen, number one is to be easy on themselves because it's, you'd never really get a chance to catch your breath and it's easy to like fall down a hole and get mad at yourself because you're not doing something that you should or not performing how you should, but be easy on yourself and just try to take it all in really because it's going to be a lot and you're going to get your feet on your ground feet on the ground at some point, but yeah, just talk. Yep. You. What's your favorite moment so far to date of your career so far? Is there a game, a moment that jumps out? What's your favorite? There's definitely a few, but I think today I would say um, beating Texas in Austin last year. That was the most fun game I've ever played. Just a regular conference season game, but um, it was electric. It was, I threw all seven and I was so proud of my team, the way we finished that. So that was, I remember watching that. I think it was uh Longhorn network. I believe Kat mm -hmm. Osterman. Yep. Uh, was kind of, that's pretty cool, right? You got one of the goats in the sport commentating on you and saying nice uh, things, which she did, she did about you. That that's gotta be a, that's a pretty cool moment there. Yeah. Got a photo with her after that game, actually. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> I did. So how did you get to meet her? Um, honestly, we were just outside talking with our families after the game and she uh, happened to come out there and she probably wasn't too happy with me that day, but <laughs> I asked her for a little pick and I'm glad I did because that was really cool. So she was down there. Did you, she approach you? You approached her? No, I approached her. Yeah. She was busy talking with people, but. <laughs> so what was that like when you approached her there? Cause this is like, I mean, an icon in the sport, you have a three-time national player of the year in Olympia. She's done it all. Were you yeah. nervous? Did you, were you hesitant? Like what, 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 what was your kind of game plan there? I was a little bit. And honestly, my dad probably, uh, it was his idea in the first place to go <laughs> talk to her. I was like, dad, come on. <laughs> but I can tell you, she was probably three feet taller than me. She had a newborn baby yeah. and yeah, she was lovely. It was so cool. That was good. I'm glad you did that. That she says she's the best. She's an awesome person. So you're not the first to have shared a, a picture story there. I'm glad you got that's a cool moment. That's definitely uh cherish that. That's a pretty awesome. Uh let's talk a little bit your team. If somebody needs to crack a joke, who's the go to? Who's the comedian of the team? Lyric Moore. <laughs> well I hundred percent. She's just a goofball. Everything that comes out of her mouth is funny in some way. <laughs> Fair. Are you superstitious? Not at all. Nope. Okay. Anybody on the team is? Um, Lyric Moore and Savannah Darche are the most superstitious people I've ever met in my entire life, actually. <laughs> is there one particular thing that you're like, okay, that's a little, that's a little superstitious where you just, you know, you can't mess with her. Like you just have to let it be. What, what is it? Um, one thing off the top of my head is in between innings, if Sav is pitching, and someone picks her up, grabs her glove, or she sets her glove down, never touch her glove or her face mask because she'll, she'll ask you to put it right back down where you got it and she'll go pick it up herself. Very Just good. Superstitions. Follow the rules. I'm superstitious. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, trust me, I'm as, I'm as, I'm way worse than that. So I, for all, it, it's, it's all good. I'm on your side and for everybody that has superstitions there, uh, there. What's it like? Cause, I feel like you always, you all play like you're, you know, you're the underdog a little bit, right? Is that, is that the mentality there with a chip on the show? What, what's the mentality like? Yeah, it's, it's somewhat of an underdog story because um, we just know in our core, like know 
so deep down that we have so much talent and we're just right on the brink of such success. And so like, yeah, we do get a little chip on our shoulder when preseason says we're last in the big 12, which I think we're third from the bottom this year, but we know that that's not where we should be. We know it should be higher and we're going to make it so that people put us higher on that list. So um, yeah, there's definitely a little fire under us because we know what we're capable of and it stings that the last couple of years we've kind of been there and just not ever made that jump. So I think, I think this year's the year to do it. I think we have literally every single piece we need. We have the depth we need, the coaching, like we're, we're right there. So what's the key to making that next step for your group? What's that? What do you think is the key? Um, I think it's just going to be consistency because you just see glimpses of a world series team and you see that team at practice every single day, but um, some pieces just fall off the wagon every once in a while. And we need to figure out how to pick that all back up together and keep moving in the same direction. And I think that comes with uh, consistency, leadership, energy. I think if all those pieces can, can stay together and start moving forward all the time, we're going to do really, really well. What do you want to do after you're done here at playing softball here? Do you want to still play or you got, what do you, what do you have planned? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm done with it after, but, um, I'm not totally sure what I want to do. I'm going to stick around Lawrence for a little bit. Um, but I'll probably end up working right now, um, kind of sport marketing route. So hopefully stick around here. Maybe one day I'll end back up in the Kansas athletics hallways. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I like that. I like that. Maybe, uh, you know, or hang out and offer Bill Self some advice, you know? Yeah. He'd love it from me, I bet. <laughs> have you ever interacted with him? I have, yeah. What's it like? Um, so this last summer I was uh athletics intern with marketing. Okay. And um I walked out of my door one day and Bill Self was right there and he had just spilled a soda on the ground. So <laughs> I went and got some paper towels to help him clean it up. But you got some heck of a good stories with some legendary people how you interact there. Right? That's a pretty good um, deal. Describe what's it like to play in the Big 12. Obviously, there's new members this year with UCF, Houston, and BYU. What advice would you give those players and what to expect in life in the Big 12? Mm. Oh, I would say, like, strap up, honestly. <laughs> because, I mean, every week anything can happen. I think that's across the board for big 12 sports, but anything can happen. Anyone can be anyone. Um, obviously OU is a powerhouse, but um, like that everyone can compete with each other at this point, I feel like. Um, so I feel a little bit of pride with the new schools coming in kind of feel like big brother, like coming into our house. So it should be fun, but I think it, it gives us a really good opportunity to kind of like put our foot down and say that like, we are Big 12. Like, this is where we belong. It's going to be a year of the, a lot of people are going to document. I feel like we, there should be like a documentary. It should be like a 30 for 30. Yeah, there's so many storylines within the league that yeah. is fascinating. I'll let you go on this. Five, ten years from now, when there's an alumni event in Salt Kansas softball or any event alumni, and your name, Casey Hamilton, gets brought up, what do you want people to say about you? What do you want your legacy to be? Mm. I would say I want people to remember just the impact that I had on the turnaround of Kansas softball and like kind of the same timeline that football's on, like just, just a program that maybe has been at the bottom for too many years, but it's definitely on the come up and going to be some, a program that people talk about and talk about for a long time and a program that people can think about when they think about powerhouse softball teams and big 12 and, good midwest softball i want to be a, i want to be in that and be someone that's remembered for helping this program i think that definitely is an understatement how much you've meant to the program and football it's a good comparison lance lightbulb's done a great job there uh and certainly i know you all got inspiration but uh hey thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule i've been a fan from afar i've watched you play i'm looking forward to seeing you play in person this year because you're gonna make multiple trips to florida where mm -hmm. I'm at, where I reside. So I'll definitely see you in person. But uh, thank you for what, uh, for taking the time to talk to us and tell your story and tell the story of Kansas softball. 
Really appreciate that. Good luck this season, and uh, I'll see you down the road. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me again.